Hello, everybody, and we are here with the game. It's going to be St. Clair College against U of T Mississauga once Welcome again. And we didn't get to do drafts, so let's go over the picks. I'll go over the side of St. Clair, and I'll give you the other side, Theo, here. We have Ricky on top as Gragas, Maddie as Volleybear, Mercury Boy as the Nico. We have Traven, Rockboom, and Biscetti on Senna. Yeah, and for U of T, we have Aluno on Gwen, Lover's Suicide, on the Zinzao, Mintvi is going to be on Hui. Uh, the Callista, I believe, is I Love You, and it's going to be a B on that Blitz Crank. So, two interesting drafts, but Senna, I think, is a very important champion Minions to look at. Fall. Usually, not paired up with something like a Draven, usually having like a Tom Kench down there or, or Choga, some sort of tank just to really scale up for free, but they're going to look for a strong early game here in Volley Bear in the jungle. It's not something you see too, too often, but he has been absolutely <laughs> destroying in the top lane mainly, just being so, so strong with those buffs, but still going to be a threat. And since that one on the other side, also a very, very strong, strong jungler. Yeah, Zinzo, a little bit more, a little bit more mobile, I'd say, on the side of U of T as a whole with their team. But I think they're going to be going for a little bit of an early game here, late lead here in the bot lane. But hey, Gwen's already getting some snips off on this Gragas, but he's just going to walk it down there. Don't worry about it here. Go over to the way, clearing the lane. Breakery Boy doing a good job of getting a little bit more CS on him. And just getting the first look at this game you can tell that these are two top of the line teams they're very evenly matched but i'd say st Clair is getting a little bit of an edge in the bot lane so far yeah and as they showed the only way they really lose that bot lane is they, they get hit by a hook from blitzcrank which is how really the blitzcrank lanes work but if they're able to keep their distance Callista. Not a very long distance champion. If they can just lock her down one time, a couple of axes from Rock Boom will do insane amounts of damage. And you can see the exhaust Rock Boom has no cleanse for the Callista. So if that cleanse ever gets, uh, if that exhaust ever gets used, the 2v2 will be very, very strong from St. Clair. But you can see they might be looking to dive here in this bot lane. But both junglers did pass boss side, both level three. Are they going to go for the invade? It looks like it. But the blue buff is up. Lover Suicide is going to take that Gromp away knowing that he has to sacrifice this blue buff because of how much pressure the Saints have in the lanes in the early game. And let's see. Oh, the smite gets used early there from Lover Suicide. Walking up way too far. Won't get hit by any CC though as, uh, as I don't think Boschetti had his um, stun there. But very good pressure from Saints early as Ricky doing so much here in the top lane, looking maybe for the solo player on Gwen. There's going to be a 2v2 in the ball lane, but Skeddy gets caught. It's going to flash out, but it's going to stay live. There's the exhaust coming up from Rockboom as he's throwing axes at the Callista. There's the first blood, but Skeddy has to be careful not to go down here. Rockboom going to go down to the Zenzao. But Skeddy's going to get flashed on, but a huge two-man route as Maddie is chasing down. Lover Suicide, but he's going to get a couple on that Zenzao. Maddie should be able to find the trade here onto the Zenzao, but Bakery is going to be, boy, he's going to flash over the wall to save him there. Still 2v2 <laughs> situation here. Mintvi is up a level, but Maddie's gonna be able to stay alive with all of that sustain. Mintvi gonna look to take down Bakery Boy, but Bakery Boy looking to take him down. Both mid laners gonna trade that one with the auto attacks. At the end of the day, it is a 3v3, but no cash outs for Draven, which is pretty important. But Wave, wave State bot lane, good for, for the side of St. Clair. So overall, I think they'll take that fight. Okay, recall on top, get a little bit of a reset. Does have a lane pushed up, but this Gwen is doing a great job at keeping my bay here. Right now, we're gonna move over to mid lane. That was a very interesting duel there. A trade, you rarely see trades come out. Yes, we see them from time to time. That was a perfectly timed trade. That Huey passive really came in clutch. And we have a gank coming out in the bot lane. Looks like the Zin Zhao here. Go for some pokes here on the Nico. And I think the Nico will be able to possibly get He's out here unless the Huey gets wrong way. done. Yeah, I think he turned the wrong oh, way minion. here. He's gonna turn into a minion, maybe I'll throw him off a little bit. He's gonna do some blast plant shenanigans here. He gets stunned and he's dead. Yeah, it's a bad blast plant, and that's gonna be a kill. A shutdown as well as he got a couple kills in that bot lane skirmish. Just great gank there from a lover suicide, knowing exactly where to go after all those kills went down in bot lane. And that's gonna be a very nice kill for UFT, but 
It's not gonna change the game too, too much, I believe. The guy gets in the top lane. Mike, look oh, for the solo kill here on Gwen, who's so, so low. Forced out that W, but Zinzao is coming over. Ricky has to be very careful, as the, uh, Gwen doesn't have flash, and the kill will come through. Ricky doesn't have flash as well, and he should be going down here to Zinzao, but he's gonna have that W. The level up's there. The ult's gonna come out into the tower range, but there is still one more minion alive, and Ricky just getting a bit too confident there. Should have maybe just backed out and pushed him away with that ultimate, but at the end of the day, he will get the one for one, and the dragon is slain in bot lane by St. Clair Saints. Not too bad, but now this Xin Zhao is going to have the most <laughs> kills in the game of 400 gold bounty this early. He's definitely the most scary one on the block here on the side of U of T. Saga. I'm getting a little worried about Matty. He doesn't really have much in terms of catch up potential here. He, he's tanky and he can do a good job of that, but right now this Jin Zhao is just going to be doing so much more damage than he could ever hope to do here. And turn over to the bot lane. They're doing a good, good job of pushing this thing up. We get some nice tower damage here, get a little bit of gold. Oh, this Blitzcrank's really going in, misses the hook, gets stunned. And that's going to be a lot man. of damage, but. And V is on the way, going, going for a little bit of a rotate gank here. Now Buschetti trying to get out with his teammate here. Dodge the hook, dodge the hook. The root. He dodges the hook, and now right they're now. under power, but... Wow, just barely gets out, but now... Forced to back, we're seeing a fight come up in the top lane, and that Gwen gets out with just a little bit of health. And Dragon is going to be started on the side of U of T. This no, the oh wait, yes, it's already been taken by Saint yeah. Clair College. My bad. <laughs> yeah, and throughout all of that, uh, Maddie was able to go top and pick up all three Void Grubs, and then uh, the Gwen walked up way too far for some reason. Even though his team was four manning bot lane, the fact that Saints were just able to survive that gank was massive. But the fact that Gwen had to use her ultimate and her ghost to survive that gank, which she should have expected, is definitely not good from the side of UFT. But what is good is Lover Suicide catching Bakery Boy here. Look how much damage he does with that tier mat. But it will Bakery Boy be able to survive? Yes, he will. But he's going to be forced to go back all the way to his tier one and recall and he's gonna be missing yet another wave mid as he doesn't have that teleport you can see he definitely doesn't want to miss that will fall, fake his recall and make his way back towards that mid lane wow. up in the top and ricky lefer doing so well here against the gwen but eating all of that q is gonna be pretty pretty dangerous q misses there not too much mana left on the side of the gragas but enough for one combo but zin Zhao is pathing top lane and ricky is gonna flash here on that gwen but won't find the kill now he will sure Surely be going down to the Xin Zhao, the Hui is there as well as the three man comes in yet again from UFT Mississauga St. Clair. Playing a bit too aggressive, look at the fancy feet there from uh, Ricky though. He's going to be able to survive that uh, for a couple more seconds but just doesn't have the mana to really do anything there. Will get taken down yet again as UFT Mississauga are finding some good picks but how much are they really losing for it all around the map? You have to look at the bigger picture here. They lost the drag and they lost, lost the scuttles and now they might get a shot down taken down as Maddie's going to be able to find him on wow. this scuttle crab and that's 700 gold towards that volley bear he's building ad as well very, very interesting path not something you see too often but that's a crucial kill that's going to get saints right back in this lead yeah, like i said i think he's going to be looking to catch up with damage here as now that gold is gonna be oh, no very hook. important for him and that hook just barely missed there and now the Saints are going to get a little bit more tower damage and try and get out. They're doing a good job. They're not far too far on this Glista. And they're great at evading at these Blitzcrank hooks. Because if those Blitz, if that Blitzcrank can't land his hooks, he's, he's, not, not, he's not very useful at all. At least other champions, if they have a root, they usually have some other terms of support. Maybe some healing, a shield, some yeah. movement buff. But really, Blitzcrank, that, hick, that, that hook is either go big or go home. And the invade's gonna come out again. Hook misses again, so Saints no. They're gonna just flash onto this uh, Zin Zhao, but he is level 6. I don't think they have the damage to take him down here. Bakery Boy's gonna come in with that Nico ultimate. Zin Zhao's on 1 HP, the tower is taken out. 1 for 1 so far. Rock Boom autoing, but Maddie's gonna go down. Now 2v3 situation for the Saints, and Rock Boom can't get any final blows here. He's not getting any cash outs. Will be at 1 HP, and it's a complete disaster for the Saints. Rock Boom was able to pick up the Kalista, but they trade that one 4 for 2. You have to miss Sog with a beautiful team play they're able to get those kills as the one for one top comes out nobody gets a kill there but in the end UFT definitely making a lot of important plays to keep themselves in this game yeah very uncharacteristic oh. messy push that was very close from the Saints though they didn't 
really have any dire reason why they needed to go so deep in on that dive. I think oh, they were really? just kill hungry. They wanted to secure a lead because this game is very They just wanted the, the cash out on the Draven. Yeah. And they, were able, they were able to get it, so now Rock Boom has an item. In bot lane, he's just going to be way ahead of this Kalista for a couple more waves. Was that worth giving the enemy I don't three think so. kills? We're going to have to see if this Draven will prove himself here. Yeah. Move back over to the mid. I think we have a little bit of a rotate going on. I think we're seeing the Callista just hold off the wave here. Everybody's prepping for this next dragon. Everybody wants this started. Cloud Drake. Move over. It looks like the Saints have started the dragon. Every boy tricking out. Three. Looks like. Looks pretty uncontested. I think Blitz is going to go for a hook, but he's going to decide against it as that is too much DPS for him to handle here. Back on the Saints out. He's going to try and peace out and continue. Full clear once that comp is up. And overall, the Saints, while they're not doing great on kills, they're keeping up in CS and gold, and they are blowing them out of the water when it comes to jungle objectives. Without a doubt, and the soul of this game is going to be Hectic Soul, so a beautiful soul for the Saints. They're going to be very happy with the fact that that's the case, but. They have to be very, very careful if they're walking up way too far. Rock Boom is going to get flashed on by the Blitzcrank. No cleanse. This is going to get hooked and t instantly taken down. Beautiful flash there from AB. And that's another crucial kill for them. And they had no idea that the jungler was there, so they can't really fight it as well. But beautiful dive there from UFT Miss Saga. They're going to get this whole bot turret. Look at that wave that the Saints are missing. They're going to lose one more on top of that as well. And the mid lane this way has a 300 gold shot down. She's so, so fed after all those bot lane skirmishes. And she's going to be so, so dangerous until this game goes on. Very dangerous indeed. It's getting a little bit low. It looks like mid oh, diving. Is it. That's a nice volleyball dive, and that's going to turn into a kill there. That's going to be a nice, a big shutdown for the Nico. Very important shutdown. It seems like anytime there's a shutdown, Maddie is just at the right place at the right time. I think they saw that, and Maddie said, Yo, my ultimate's up. We we'll just dive this mid lane away. Doesn't really have too much mobility, no flash, no nothing. Free shutdown for us, and the fact that Bakery Boy is able to pick that up is massive for them. But what is massive for the side of UFT and Saga, they're going to be able to pick up Rock Boom yet again using that bush to their advantage, and Muschetti is going to opt to. Uh, not dodge that one, gonna get hit by the Hulk and the Callista will be able to pick up that kill yet again. The bot lane of St. Clair College get double killed and they're 1 in 7 in this bot lane, having to drave in Senna as that bot lane is definitely not something they want to see. And I just want to take a look at the items here. It looks like the Volibear is building Seared Sky, yeah, which is not a little bit something. of an interesting pick, but oh, it'll be good for damage. That's a big Gragas ult there. No That's flash. gonna be a guaranteed kill. Look at that damage. Bakery Boy, just leading the charge here, always getting these key kills. And now I kind of want to see this Volibear gank the bot lane when possible, because I'm seeing a lot of bounties accumulating there. And that's going to be a, another possible kill in the mid lane, just barely. Not going to be a kill. Nezin's our ultimate, able to keep himself alive, but beautiful roam there from Ricky Lefer going down to that mid lane and finding his ultimate to pick up that kill. Look at Saints, they see the Callista has a shutdown now, and they're all making their way over, but Blitzcrank also has a shutdown, so they're just gonna pick that one up while they're out and give it to Rock Boom, and they do! A cash in plus a shutdown for that Draven is gonna be massive. A beautiful team play here from Saints, as it's a super chaotic game, but it seems like they have finally found their stride and are making all the right plays as they take down the first turret of the game. Yeah, and something I want to point out is they've gotten every single Void Grub U of T misses. <laughs> Saga has not found a single one, and that's gonna be brutal as we get closer and closer to these towers. <laughs> it's just gonna get worse and worse for them, unless they can start depriving them of these dragons. Like, they really don't want to give up soul. I just... The longer this game goes on, I really don't see U of T Mississauga winning. It's yeah. just a really rough position to be in in the long term. Yeah, they, I don't think they have the scaling to put up with the side of the Saints. And Saints drafting a comp with so much CC, it's going to be hard to play against. But Blitzcrank is going to always be able to make a lot of space by just existing. They have to re respect the hook. So it's going to be very interesting how the Saints play this. They are up to gold at 15 minutes. Pretty good spot to be in. But you have to miss all going to pick up some gold back as Kalista. It's just free farming down this bottom lane. Looks like Saints 
have completely conceded a couple waves there and they're just going to choose to play for this Rep Herald, which I believe would have been free anyway. Yeah, it's, it's strange to see them all group up for this one Rep Herald, but maybe they just want to try and get it as quick as they can. Leave no room for you to miss Saga to get any lead objective-wise, but using a tower is a little bit rough. I guess they are up two towers now. It's just a bit of a wide space down there in the bot lane. Very dangerous going forward. So we're going to see Rock Room continue to farm up here in the safe mid lane. Tower's still nice and healthy. And he's there to protect as well. And as for Dragon, the next Dragon is going to be up in just a couple of seconds. seconds. They're going to drop a Rift. They're going to try and overwhelm this mid lane. Buy some space. That should break the turret, right? I do think that's a break, if not oh, just barely. Hit. But that's going to be two autos right there. Nice, really good spot, and I feel a big team fight brewing. But it's very, very hard for UFC Team Saga to now walk into the river blind. They have one TP ward behind, maybe for their Gwen, but Saints are just going to start up this dragon, and walking into Bakery Boy is going to be so, so hard, but he's a bit out of position as it's going to be, uh, he's going to turn into the Gragas. Gwen is on the flank here, but now there's two Graguses as the ults come out, the CC comes out, and the insta goes now knock up on two, three there from from Bakery Boys. The cleanup comes out from the Saints. There's a shutdown coming down, but everybody is going to fall. It's just the Gwen and the Blitzcrank left alive. Can they pick up the kill to Gwen here as well? Basketti going to get that slow, and they're going to give that kill over to Rockboom, who's going to get one tap by the Gwen, actually. Beautiful play there by the Gwen to get the trade back, but at the end of the day, it's a four for two for the side of the Saints, and their third dragon now one more dragon and they will be on that soul yeah things are looking very very good for the saints even if they don't get soul if they can maybe secure baron in the next couple of minutes here i think they have to have this game in the bag they have every buff they could possibly get so far U of T, mississauga they're good at dueling they're good at getting these kills but these buffs are really do add up in the long term it, as you can see slowly but surely the saints are really securing their victory without a doubt and that was a beautiful paw blossom there from bakery boy finding three and then just the rest of the saints able to follow up ricky. ricky doesn't really have the one shot potential but does have the ultimate coming up in just a few seconds there's gonna be the q coming out but it was hit the body slam comes out and let's see the <laughs> He has the ultimate ready right now. It will come out, but it won't find the kill. The Q will come through. He will pick it up, but he should be going down for his troubles. Who's going to pick up the kill? Flash is just wasted on his side. He's just buying a lot of time here, but if Blitzcrank can land this knockup, he will be more than dead. And maybe he will be able to live. No, will die to I the Callista. Hoping. hoping he could survive there, but he bought a lot of time, though, with that flash, which allows Bakery Boy to push out that top lane as the flank it comes in here from the side of UFT. They're going to flash onto Rock Boom, look to one-shot him, and they do. Maddie has to get out here, not to give his shutdown, uh, his, his life over to that Callista, but Bakery Boy is here for the backup. He did TP over to the mid lane to make sure that his team did not get chased down. Yet again, UFT and Sog are putting all of their... Uh, utility into killing Rockboom and they're really making sure that Rockboom dies here but the rest of the Saints are just so so far ahead now that Senna even is starting to scale up as well and this is going to be a very very hard game for side of Team Saga to come back and even though they're getting the shutdowns onto Rockboom. Are they trying to beef up Rockboom here and I think you Saga is at reading that are they try and shut him down stun his growth at every single junction here. Bakery Boy sending out a fake out it scares the Blitzcrank, but he backs off. He's in a safe spot right now. Bakery Boy just trying to hold off this massive push in the top lane. It looks like U of T Mississauga is going for a little bit of a risky Baron play as the rest of the Saints have vision and they are just going to all collapse on U of T here. Gonna do a lot of damage here. Push them back, but they're not going to overly commit. They don't want to risk losing somebody so close to Baron. Yeah, I think the best way for the Saints to play this game is just to chill out until the soul spawns. And UFT can't ever start up this Baron unless Saints just make a huge mistake. So I think Saints are stronger in a 5v5. And if they can just wait out 2 minutes 30 seconds when both Baron and Dragon are up, they can force either of those. And UFT Saga has to answer. So it just puts them in such a tough spot. And they have such a good comp to do these objectives, but they're going to be going very, very deep here. Boschetti is going to find the pick onto the 
Senna there uh, is gonna go down. The Kalista goes down as well, but Rockboom is just free hitting. Maddie's gonna stun up a B there, and that should be a kill yet again for Rockboom, who's now stacking up his item there on 29 stacks. Is very, very important. Maddie now walking up really, really far here. Could have maybe went up a little bit way too far here, but I think he's gonna look to turn this one. Rockboom is coming over. Maddie gets completely one shot, and Rockboom's gonna go down as well. A couple shutdowns going over there. Gwen picking those up is huge for UFT Miss Saga. As you can see, Saints just making those silly mistakes. Maddie can just ult out of there and survive, but they're getting way too greedy here as they should be playing the slow game, but they want to end this one very, very quickly. Yeah, they are looking to try and end this as soon as possible. They don't want that soul to be up. So, really, the next minute and 30 seconds of this game is where we're going to see who wins and who will be going home here empty handed. Taking into with this girl Gwen in the bot lane. The Gwen's DPS is just a little bit too much for Ricky to duel anymore. I think he was having a yeah. good time earlier on, but this Gwen has scaled very hard and just does so much burst damage as we saw earlier, just burning that volley bear to a crisp. That ultimate. Over to the mid lane. It's gonna be Biscetti and Bakery Boy holding things down, trying to prevent this tower from going down. And I think the Saints are just gonna play for soul which is fair if you're already playing for the long game yeah you don't want to risk trying i think they would be down for losing baron potentially as they, they can secure this dragon i don't think eft Masaga can afford to give over soul as they spot out the zinzao on that sweeper from basketti that's going to be a very very easy pick here unless the saints just get run over here the sun ult is massive rock boom will pick up a kill onto the zinzao there but will get chased down by Gwen here. There's three picks though coming up from the Saints. It's Bakery Boy found a huge Nico ultimate and this Gwen is way too far out. Does not have flash. We'll look to go over that wall but Ricky Lafour with a beautiful ultimate there. Bond the Gragas and Maddie's gonna pick up that shutdown. That's gonna be free soul for the side of the Saints and that might be the team fight that blows this game completely open. Bakery Boy getting those kills will have a third item in base probably and now Saints after soul will probably look to make their way over towards that Baron. Yeah, they have half of them going, securing some towers with all the people down, and they're also Great securing soul. It's really looking like there's no way to come back for U of Team Saga unless they can win a massive, Blue massive team fight. Down. Maybe play for Elder Soul, but they're gonna have to last another six minutes, which I really don't see happening. I think they're gonna go for one last ditch Baron play. They think the Saints are gonna try and be starting that. They're gonna try and contest that. They do have vision. They know the Saints haven't started it. Be very cautious as they walk all the way up to here. We see Muschietti go invade this jungle and try and catch this Callista off guard. The Callista's gonna have to back off. We'll be taking this engagement right now. Yeah, and Rockboom's now on three items. Bakery Boy is on three items, but he's walking up a little bit too far. We'll look for that ultimate. We'll get a couple knocks down. Rockboom popping his ultimate as well as Bakery Boy somehow lives, and now the chase will come through from the Saints, but Rockboom walking up a little bit too far. Gets absolutely one shot there from the side of UFT Miss Saga. A nice little play there to set up in that bush, but I don't know if the Saints had vision on it or not. But doesn't matter, Rockwoom gets caught out yet again and goes down for the ninth time this game on the Draven. I don't think they had vision that much. I think he saw him with the, with the, with the Seeker, but yeah. they couldn't really do much with it. And this game, well, it should be in the Saints' hands. U of Team Saga still does so much damage. They can still win these team fights. If they play their cards perfectly, I think they might be able to have a very oh competitive my. game here. I mean, just look at that damage yeah. as well. The half of his health. Quay. <laughs> Quay, it just does a lot of damage. Tricky chance to play, but if you can play him. Oh, look at that poke. It's a nice rude love of suicide. They're very, very low. It's, a, it's an ult from Senna. Doesn't really find much with it, though. But it does help him, Maddie. And they force out a Gwenti P there. Blitzcrank going back in onto Buschetti. That's a suicide mission if I've ever seen one. Flash onto the backline from Ricky Lefer is going to find the ultimate onto a couple there. The Gwen goes down. This can be a bear stop for the Saints as Rock Boom snipes the Callista with his ultimate. This will 100% be a bear start here for the Saints. It's only Zin Zhao and Huey. They have to find everything here. As the ultimate comes down on Huey, but it only hits a Buschetti on the center. He will happily heal up all of that damage. It's a free bear for the side of the Saints. It's a 7k gold lead for the side of the Saints. And with this Baron, they should look to find at least two tier 3 turrets, maybe a couple inhibitors. Yeah, they're looking to end everything right here. Let's find a couple more picks. No way. It is looking like a 
very free game here. Maddie is pushing. This is Zinza, but they're gonna decide against it. They're like, why are we chasing this guy so far? We could just back and then end the game, and that looks to be the plan. But they don't have a wave bot lane. They need to sync up mid and bot wave lanes and just let Ricky sit down in the bot lane, push it out, and let the rest of the team push out the mid lane. As long as the bakery boy is around them, I feel like their team fight is just insane. As long as he can just land that pop blossom on a couple carries, they will get one pop. But looks like UFT Sug is heavily investing in this top side of the map. I'm surprised Saints don't send anybody towards that ball lane to push out that wave. They have the Baron buff. It would just be so much pressure for free, but looks like Ricky is going to opt to go top lane. They, I guess they want to pick up that tier 2 top because it is worth a lot of gold, but I think just having that map, map pressure with ball lane would be just a little bit better. I think that might be a pick. They're able to find Xin Zhao Senna just finding the slow Xin Zhao force to use his ultimate so early on. Will just be completely useless in this defense now without his ultimate. And this tier 3 is going to go down in a matter of seconds with a Baron buff and 4 people hitting. Meant to be walking up very far but doing so much. Polka's Gwen is on the flank on a pink cord. They should be able to see this. Ricky Lafer is going to TP into the middle of the team on the Grag is here. And they're going to look to take this inhibitor. But Busquetti has to be very careful on that Senna. Will pop like a balloon if he gets hit by anything. Let's see where the hook comes out from a B. As the teleport comes out from Gwen with that hex gate. Has to be careful here as Saints are threatening but they don't really have a wave top lane yet. They need to go push that one out. Gwen gonna definitely look to pick that one up but won't be able to and Saints should for sure pick up this top tier too. Yeah, it looks to be the case. There's a lot of defense going on here with the Gwen and the Blitzcrank. Really don't want to get hooked here. They really don't want to give up any kills right now. But yeah, this top of tier two is going to go down in just a few seconds. We have all the ult. Have that oh. ult under the belts, and there it is. Two ults being used, and that's going to be a very good pop blossom. And look at that. They're shredded down to ribbons right now. Ricky Lafleur slaying one, Gwen getting one in the chaos. But it's all going to go the way of St. Clair. All it is is Hoey, the last one alive, getting rooted and oh, getting biscotti. taken down to nothing. And look at Maddie just leading the charge for his team, pushing all the way on through. Senna securing the ace. And now, why not run? Triple into double the for Rock Boom. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be great for him. And that is going to be the game. But that's only our first game. That yeah, was that's a very good first game. Very good first game in terms of spectating. It was very fun yeah. to watch. A lot of kills were like 50 kills that game. 52, I think. It was a very fun match to watch. But a lot of mistakes from both sides here and there. Uh, could yeah. also be said a lot of nice plays from each team, yeah. finding picks here and there, which there was a lot of, but definitely a lot of mistakes from both teams. They're both going to want to clean up. Maybe a bit of uh, pressure here. Obviously, both teams undefeated could definitely see some interesting plays there, but Saints, in the end, it was only a 27-minute game, and they, they they snowballed so well after a couple early plays. Yeah, well, I think the main thing that really led them to victory there was the jungler, the volley bear. While he wasn't getting as many kills as Xin Zhao, the Xin Zhao, Xin Zhao was really lethal in that first couple minutes of the game. They got every single Void Grab, they got every single Dragon. I don't think they got a single jungle objective the entire time. And that is really what led them to fail like yeah. they just were unable to secure or even contest any of them like it wasn't even like a fight over they got a kill out of it yeah. it's got nothing out of these jungle objectives and i really want to see them clean that up in the next game it's very hard to get a jungle objectives when the rest of uh, when your lanes are just not pushed in you could see bakery boy in the mid lane was always first to rotate he's dropping waves to go <laughs> rotate over Hui would just stay there for be that one extra wave to pick up those minions and then move after but by that time the rest of the teams that and in bot lane it felt like the whole time rock boom and and uh, Buschetti had the push you saw it led to a lot of deaths from rock yeah. boom and Buschetti, but uh, with that pressure, just surviving that one gank when they got four-man bot lane was massive for them. They picked up the first dragon, then got four-man gank, survived that, went uh, top lane with the jungler, picked up the void grubs off that gank top lane, and then from there on, they were just able to play the map perfectly and just, I think they out, out macroed UFT pretty hard this first game. Yeah, definitely. It's just the tiny little details, every little advantage, advantage they could get, they got. But not to count out UFT Mississauga, they 
are very good at taking these fights and dueling very, very well. Like, even into the late game, they were getting kills when the odds were stacked against them on yeah. paper. So I think we're going to be in for a very competitive game too, but we're going to throw it to a quick break and we'll be right back with more League of Legends.
And hello, everybody, and welcome to the Game 2 Draft of St. Clair College Varsity Team versus University of Toronto, Mississauga. And we see our first few bands have come through. Theo, what are you thinking of this? We have a Smolder, Rail, and Seraphine band out from the side of the Saints and from the side of University of Toronto, Mississauga. They have Twisted Fate, Ash, and now they're waiting for their third ban. We've seen Saints ban out Seraphine pretty often. They just don't want to play, I think, bot lane against that champion, <laughs> and I completely understand them. It's not the most exciting lane, but it's good coverage too. You can play Seraphine mid really? if you really want to. And there's the Nico ban. Nico they ban. don't want to mess with that again, and for good reason. Big Blue Boy was very, very strong on the Nico in the last game, so figures they wouldn't want to go up against that again. And I also like the Smolder ban as well. Smolder, very strong champ. You don't want to go up against someone who has an execute on their queue. Yeah. But we're going to go look over and we see the Callista first pick. That's going to be Rock Boom on the Callista. Just played against it. Now I was going to opt to pick that one up. Very strong early game jungler. Uh, ADC, yes. apologies, not a jungler. <laughs> and they're going to be looking to play around those dragons yet again, I believe, with this first pick. Let's see what it's countered with. Avaris, which is an interesting pick. I Just don't, a solid pick. Yeah, I don't know how that's going to go. I'm really curious to see what the next couple of picks are going to be, though, because really the synergy with Avaris is going to really tell us how this is going to go. And, well, they can't pick Rel. So that's something off the table. And yeah. they pick the Gragas, depriving St. Clair of that key pick. They don't want to have to go up against the Bumba, the ults, <laughs> anything that Ricky has up his sleeve. They don't want to have to deal with it. And that could put for sure be a flex as well. Could be a jungler, because usually you don't see top laners pick this early in the draft, but it is a Gragas. Doesn't really have any bad matchups. Can sustain in lane, clear the waves with relative ease. and. It's going to be countered out by a Silas. Very, very exciting pickup here. It's going to be Bakery Boy, I believe, in the mid lane on that one. And, you know, now it forces UTM to maybe pick some different Ooh. champions to not give over any strong ultimates. And <laughs> speaking of strong champions, Zin Zhao in the jungle, just probably one of the best junglers in the game right now. You can see how he was able to snowball so fast in that early game, but just fell behind because it's a team game at the end of the day. But Zin Zhao... Very, very strong first and, three picks here. And one thing I want to point out here, if it was not for the bands, I would have thought that these team names are swamped or we're getting almost a little bit of a mirror pick yeah. of the last game, so we'll see who plays it better. And I really do love the Silas pick. That's going to be good for the Graggy Salt. It's going to be good with all the ults, ults on the board right yeah. now on the enemy team. So that's going to be something you're going to have to take into consideration when you're down to your last few picks. And I'm excited to see the next couple of bands are going to be. We're going to see UTM banning out the Renata Glask on the side of St. Clair College. Not going to pick up that support, which I think is a good pick, especially when you're in these big team fights. You don't want to have to deal with the frenzy. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, I'm wondering what they're going to pair up this Kalista with. Nocturne does get banned out. Never want to play against that Nocturne-Oriana combo if you're on the side of the Saints. So a good ban from them. They already have their jungler. They just need to get rid of some maybe uh, tougher matchups for Zin Zhao or something like that. And that's exactly what they do with that Nocturne ban. You can see Olaf banned away now. Ricky very well known for his Olaf. Won't be able to play that one this game. And it's going to be that Orianna band. They don't want to play against either <laughs> Orianna or Nocturne. A very strong combo combined, but strong champions on their own, even without each other. So let's see what UTM decide to pick up with their fourth pick here. Uh, I have no idea what role they're even picking for. What do you think? What do you think? I, th I think it's either top. I think it's top or mid is on its way next. And I, I think... think Oh yeah, jungle. Maybe it jungle. could be jungle. Could be jungle, it could be jungle. Mid I think it's either gonna be jungle or mid. I'm gonna have to agree with you there. And Ooh. what is it gonna be? Last second volley bear. Still flex. I think that's gonna be jungle. I mean, you don't know. That's my guess. I think we we're gonna know. get a mirror comp. They liked what the Saints were doing. They want to try it. They want to have a little bit of that fun for themselves. But now it's up to Saints here to make the next pick. All the bands are in place. Anything is that's still on the board is still able to be chosen and if you had to guess 
an Alistar? That's that's okay. That's, that's a decent good, yeah. pick. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good He'll here. He'll be unkillable later in this game. If they play their cards right, that could be something very difficult. And I feel like this is really going to tie the whole team together. What is St. Clair College's last pick? They have 15 more seconds. It's going to be Ricky as well. And I think he just had, he doesn't know if it's Volibear Ooh. or Gragas top. So he's going to pick something that's good into both. And that's going to be the Renekton. He was buffed uh, a little bit in the last patch or the patch before. And he's been kind of a sleeper OP pick, I want to say. Very, very strong pick. He, he was meta for like two straight years. Picked up in every single game, but kind of fell off the face of the earth. But... After these recent buffs, very, very strong champion. We're going to see a Malzahar in the mid lane. Not something I like too much. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of a super passive pick. And you could look at UTM's team comp. They don't have too much damage. They have Malzahar, Varus, Volibear, Nautilus, and Gragas. The thing, though, is Silas. Silas, Silas is going to be able to anything. take that Malzahar ult. Yeah. Which is going to be insane going later at any point in the game, really. As soon as he gets that ult, he's going to be able to shut down those people and not also have to play the rest of Malhazar's kit. So he's in a very good spot right now. I like the team comp on the side of St. Clair. UDM, they have an all right comp as well, but I think St. Clair, if I had to bet, I would bet on them. Yeah, I mean, Saints, I think, definitely won this draft. They have the better DPS, they have the uh, better side lane push as well I want to say but in the team fights if UTM can string f together a few uh, CC combinations if Malzahar can get a good ult to start off a team fight and they can get an early pick that's going to be basically the only way they can win but it looks like from the look of things Saints will definitely have that ball push at like level three or four with that Kalista Alistar and the Varus has to be played very very safe to not get caught out. Yeah it's going to be a tough game for UTM, but hey, maybe with that Volley Bear, they're going to have a little bit more freedom going for these jungle objectives, and they'll be in a little bit of a better spot going into the next game. But with those predictions, we'll see if our forecast is correct. We're going to throw it to a quick break. We'll be right back with game one, or game two, actually. <laughs>
Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Here we are. St. Clair College won the last game, and U of T Saga has something to prove. Another sea lol game is welcome upon us. To see who takes the series potentially if St. Clair continues to show their dominance. U of T was very good at finding these duels, finding these early fights. If they can get this early lead on the Saints, I think we're in for one heck of a game. Yep, and as you said, it's going to be the Gragas in the top lane and the Volibear in the jungle. So let's see how this matchup is going to go. It's going to be a slow start for both teams. Nothing too crazy going on in the level one. As I wonder what pathing we're going to see from the junglers this game. Last game, both junglers opted to go from top lane to bot lane and then Saints went for the invade. Do you think we'll see some sort of similar strategy come out for the Saints this game, or do you think they're going to switch it up? I think they're going to have to switch it up just a little bit just because of the team comp. Bakery Boy being Silas, he's probably going to play similar, but I think we're going to see a little bit more aggression from him because Silas is a little bit more tankier than Nico. But with all that into consideration, I think they're still going to try and go for these objectives. But this comp gives them a little bit more flexibility, playing a little bit more aggressively, going for those kills, taking those duels. Yeah, and uh, you know, Alistar is a very weak champion at level one, so they're gonna look to hit that level two and three spikes a little bit early, but struggling to do so in the bottom lane. But if as long as soon as they get that level two, you could see maybe a flash engage or something crazy. No cleanse for the side of the Varus, only the ghost and rock boom. Playing is and Nautilus has to go cleanse. The ward will be dropped in the bush there for the side of UFT Mississauga. So now if they have any idea that anyone's there, they'll have a ward there. They do hit the level two first. Ricky left for the top lane, getting those conquer stacks top. Gonna get a nice little trade there onto the Gragas. But as expected, it's gonna be a pretty slow pace through the early game. Yeah, just a slow, typical early game. And the Saints are playing it well. They're playing pretty patient. UFT actually not having the best time overall. Top line, top lane, it's a relatively even. Slight edge to U of T there. And in the mid lane, I think the Saints are winning every other lane. I, we see a little bit of a jungle again, engage. Uh, Patty, once again, he's Both looking to steal this blue buff. And all three of his team members are there to back him up. And he might even secure the Gromp as well. Oh, he's is, on the ward. Oh. Jeez, that was very dicey there. But nonetheless, this invade is going to be very good for Maddie. He's going to get a lot of extra XP in this early game, which matters so, so, so much when you're a jungler. And he's looking to be very scary on the scenes out as he finds a little oh, bit of a gank here. And that is probably going to be a kill. Yes, that is it. We're going to go over the Volley Bear trying to salvage this messy, messy fight on his team. But can't really do any much of anything. I mean, as a Malzahar, your only job is to sit in lane and farm, and that's it. Press your R sometimes here and there. Like a nice pickup there from the Saints, but speaking of nice pickups, it's a fight to be too bought. Miracle gonna go down on the Alistar's Rock Boom. Just doesn't have the damage to take the, find the kills here. The flash comes out from Rock Boom. Should be able to survive this if he's able to dodge the hook here. Volley Bear is here, and he's not able to dodge the hook and yet again. A 2 4 0 oh, in the ball is UFT Mississauga simply just outclassing the Saints down down the ball lane. Yeah, this ball lane is gonna be a pretty rough for the Saints, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna make that de <laughs> decision now. It's gonna be a hard time because I just don't really like the synergy going on the ball lane, you know. Like you said, I think Alistair is gonna take a little bit of time to get up to par. And Nicholas is gonna get a little bit better quicker so it's a, it's a little bit of an interesting matchup there but I think for the rest of the Saints team they're going to be having a good time they just have to make sure that this virus doesn't get too fed and becomes a problem for everybody else yeah without a doubt but already pretty far ahead in the early game getting those couple kills is going to be crucial for that Varus Saints gonna have to be careful nice chains land from Bakery Boy yet again he's gonna find a huge trade again in that mid lane We'll push that wave out and let's see what Saints decide to play for this game. Will it be the Dragon or will it be the Rift Herald, uh, the Rift Grubs here? 
Baker Boy doing a good job in mid lane to keep up the pressure with the Malzahar. Not the easiest thing to do. We'll try and push that mid wave out just so he can move somewhere. And it looks like Saints are going to opt to go for those Void Grubs. You can see Maddie already picks one up. We'll smite the second one. So that one is going to go down in no time. And it looks like there's going to be no contest coming up from the side of UFT Miss Saga. One thing I do want to point out is... <laughs> the Silas is building Dark Seal, which is an interesting pick. It's it's good, but it is definitely a risk, especially this early. Sure, he got the early kill. It just goes to show how confident he is in this lane. He didn't even get the kill, actually. Went over to the jungler, but just having that little extra lead, he wants to try and continue to push that lead throughout the entire game, get that snowball going. Oh. But he's fighting mid lane. Like that, it's not going to be great when you're going Dark Seal. Sure. The jungler did get the kill, but he's still not building those stacks. I got one stack for the assist, but, which is... But he died. <laughs> he died, he died, but he died and then got the assist. Oh, so I see. It actually yeah, it works out not the worst, but speaking of working out for the worst, the bot lane of St. Clair is having a rough time here. Yes, Rockboom is up on CS a little bit, but they're just losing these trades straight up to be 2 as Ultimus Saga have really been doing well here. They're going to try and heal up with that Alstar, but you could see a lot of members committed towards this wild lane. It's gonna be Bakery Boy as well moving over into it looks like Saints yet again might go for that in fade. Let's see what Maddie does. He knows the Gromp is started. It's on a ward, but can Saints just force this play? I don't think they'll be able to as they're gonna back up to their lanes and continue farming. And they're just gonna back right up. They don't want to make these risky plays, which is something that we saw them doing in the last game we for a lot of risky uh, risky plays and it didn't quite work out for them, I would say. Sure they won the match, but what they won from was just being so dang consistent on these jungle objectives. And so far, that looks to continue to be the case. They got the first three grubs, and now they have to try and play around this first flame and drake. We get this first little extra bit of damage, it's gonna pay dividends this entire game. Without a doubt. Silas did get the Malhazar ult, and I think he is going to go for a gank in the bot lane to try and swing things this way. You see Maddie is going for the gank as well. Alistar goes down the Callista trying to get out, and trying not to die, but the Vars still can put damage from long range. But he's going to go very, very low, and he's going to go down to the Zin Zhao. That's another kill going over. And another stack for Silas. And that was a very nice play from Saints, but on the flip side of the map, Ricula Fur is gonna go down. It didn't respect the gank, but when your whole team is bot side, you just have to play a little bit more safe. It's a mistake we've seen both of these top laners now make when your team's really committing for that bot lane. And the top lane, you might have to drop a couple minions, drop maybe a wave, but if you get some kills on the other side of the map, it's definitely worth it. The spell shield's gonna get bursted <laughs> up there, and the chains should easily come in here from Bakery Boy, but the cover is there from his teammate. Oh, maybe going a bit too deep there. We'll get ulted down, and that will for sure be Bakery Boy falling down, I think, but no, it looks like he'll be able to make it out alive. Miracle doing... <laughs> Great job in mid lane, making sure Bakery Boy was able to survive there. Was forced to use a couple of flashes there from the side of the Saints, but throughout that whole time they did pick up a dragon and were able to keep their mid laner alive. <laughs> I find it a little bit comedic that he used Malhazar ult and then he was surprised that there's a Malhazar ult waiting for him on the other end. <laughs> uh, I seem to forget that he is Silas, that is not his ult. That was a super ult, he got returned right back to him. But looking back on this top lane, Ricky doing a good job at clearing. Has a lot of CS yeah. on this Gragas, but you know, being down a death, he's going to still have a lot of work to do. He doesn't quite have a lead on this Gragas just yet. I think, I think he actually does. I think 20 CS makes up for a kill. So The, the Gragas also didn't get the yeah, kill Yeah, he didn't as get well, the kill so. as well. So I think gold-wise, he's definitely up. XP-wise, maybe not, but... Yeah, I mean, Ricky not doing too bad in this matchup. He did have the counter pick, and he's doing very, very well for himself so far. But Maddie on the Zin Zhao, 3 0. We've seen these Zin Zhaos get these early leads. Uh, we just need to see if Maddie's going to be able to convert this one. They're on the Rift uh, Void Grubs yet again. They were able to get the first three. They're going to look to get the other three, and it looks like it's completely free as nobody from UFC Saga is going to go contest. And wow, two games six. in a row, all six of Void Grubs for the side of St. Clair College. Seems like UFC Saga is really undervaluing these Grubs. Uh, like, it, it seems that just getting these towers down in, a, in a record time is such a big buff. You don't want to let that go, especially in the early game. It carries all the way to the end. Even 
when you're down all the rest of your buffs. You need that, or at least you need to deprive your enemy of those void cups. And wow, a nice chain. That's gonna be a kill going over to the Xin Zhao. And I need to point out, he is up four and zero oh right now. Only ten minutes into the game, Maddie on the Xin Zhao is a force to be wet. Oh, oh. with. Hook on to Rockwoom comes out, the ultimate comes out, no cleanse there, but the flash will come out, they get the ult back, and looks like they want to go back in here, but Miracle will be thrown over to the side. A good job from the Saints to avoid dying in that balling, but they did have to burn the flash on that Kalista. But nonetheless, Bakery Boy is just able to find these chains in mid lane onto Mint V. How many times has he found those? And the follow up was there from Matty. Miracle is going to make his way to the ball lane alongside Matty. And let's see if you have to miss Saga are going to step up just a little bit too far as Lover Suicide probably going to make their way over towards that barn as well. Yeah, I think they're going to really try and shove this ball lane here, but we're going to move back over to mid. Bakery Boy is looking for a chain grab, doesn't quite find it. Still in the spot lane, Maddie up the rear, pushing in, trying to gain some ground for his team, but he's actually going to turn towards this mid lane and try to get a kill for Bakery Boy. Guys, there's a little bit of a stalemate going on. Malzar wave clear is just a little bit too strong for Silas to keep up. It's dead even, even though he has a lead on him. Yeah, Malzahar eventually will just clear out those waves without even stepping up one foot. It's just in that early game, he doesn't really have the damage to clear out those waves with such ease. But as soon as Bakery Boy's Q back, uh, kills the backline minions, it will be easy wave clear for both. Ricky still having a nice 20 CS lead up in this top lane as the Gragas and the Renekton are just scaling up. Matty going to find a huge chunk there onto the Malzahar and with this Dragon spawning a minute 15, you definitely have to think that the Saints are going to be looking for that one, but they're going to be looking for an invade here. They can't find anything there. Bakery Boy is going to stop that back, but pick up the Volley Bear ultimate. That's very interesting, but I believe now he's going to sprint over to that top lane. Ricky's going to push out this wave. They're going to Volley Bear ult the turret, and I think this Gragas is done for, but no. Silas decides to stay mid lane and will make his way over to the bot lane. Yeah, they're looking to shove this bot lane here, but a little bit dicey. Ooh, we have the Silas with the Volley Bear ult. That's going to be a very fun one to watch when that gets oh. used, and he might have to use it very soon. He's spot dueling this Volley Bear. Takes a little bit of damage here. It's a little bit more squishy. Does have the levels, but he doesn't really have the damage to back it up here as the rest of UT Mississauga is also there to meet him. Wow, this Volibear is going to try and drag out and steal all these chickens out from the head. Yeah, and it's going to be Saint setting up for the second dragon. It is up in 10 seconds. Let's look at the items. You see Rock Boom, even though Enemy Varus has three kills, he does have that Blade of the Rune King first, so a huge item advantage there for the side of the Saints. But the TP is going to be coming out from Ricky Lefer. They're going to go all in onto Rock Boom. They will take him down, but at what cost? Let's see. Both TPs coming out from both the top laners. Maddie's going to pick up one. They should be able to pick up the Nautilus as well. Maddie's going to pick that one on his Ricky Lefer. He's going to look for something here. Can he stun off the Gragas? Does he have the W? No, he doesn't. An ult coming out from the Gragas, but won't find anything with that is Maddie's gonna choose to die the turret. Ricky's gonna help him out. That's a triple kill. The Empowered W comes through and they're able to find the fourth St. Clair. Get a four for one team fight. They're gonna pick up the second dragon and they just blew this game wide open. Yeah, they have just taken a very dominant lead here. And I don't know how U of T Mississauga is going to recover from this. It looks like Mint V is gonna try and stop this wave from being pushed uh, onto this tower. Maybe try and get Miracle, try and get a kill, try and salvage anything in that fight, but now it's going to be a little bit of a waste of his time. Aside from a nice lane at the shove, we look over. They are going to secure their first dragon, potentially. Maddie's trying to duel this Nautilus, but he's a little bit too tanky. It's going to be a nice little time waster for him. But now, Rockboom and Maddie are going to be shoving this dragon. They need to get there and quick before the Volibear oh, dies. And he so steals rough. the dragon right out from under their nose. A complete desperation play from U of T, just starting up that dragon with no real info and Saints coming at the perfect time. Pick that one up. It's going to be two items now. Hunt that Zinzalo as that's just an error. No, no double kill going down just yet. But speaking of fed members on Saints, Maddie, two items so, so early into the game. You can see the Volley Bear 
doesn't, hasn't even started to build toward a second item, so the jungle difference has been immense so far. Ricky doing a very good job, up 30 CS now in the top lane, and Bakery Boy, even though it is down a couple of uh, CS creeps here and there, has found a lot of kills for Maddie to really accelerate the lead here. And speaking of accelerating the lead, they're just gonna walk into the jungle, kill the enemy jungler, and I think we're gonna see a lot more of that in this game. Saints have a huge gold lead, and they're gonna look to continue the pressure. It's a gold lead, and look at that. They're gonna continue Everywhere. to build this gold lead as they just dive the tower. Maddie, legendary, eight kills, four assists. He has participated in all but two fights in the, or kills in this match for his team. And right now, you have team Mississauga is just stuck playing catch up. And it is not a fun game to play. And look at that, turrets are falling. We're seeing mid, top, fall in synchronicity here. Let's move back over to the Volley Bear. We're trying to clear his jungle. Hasn't been taken by Maddie yet, but he might have a duel on his hands here. Yeah. Up to duel at Malhazar in the bot lane. I have a lane swap, a bot in mid. You can see it. Now Rift is going to go over St. Clair College. They are continuing to just get every single possible objective in this game. Yeah, this game is looking very, very unplayable now for Yuf Team Saga. Saints just have leads all across the board, and it would take crazy mistakes for them to lose at their lead here but speaking of mistakes bakery boy blindly walking up into three members will go down here more than likely will get that volley bear ultimate but the chase comes out from lover suicide lives on one hp a very nice pick there for the side of ufc missile you can see bakery boy losing a lot of stacks there on the dark seal five stacks there that he has stacked up unfortunately for him but it's these tiny mistakes that the Saints are making that they shouldn't be. They're definitely going to look to fix those up the longer the season goes. Ricky now ahead of the Gragas will be doing a lot of damage up in the top lane. Going to look to just push the silence, but has to be careful as the Nautilus is covering here. But Maddie, Miracle, and Rock Boom say this is our tower now. We're going to take this one down with ease. Another tier 2 falls as St. Clair keep expanding their gold lead. Yeah, they're expanding the gold lead and they're expanding just their dominance across this entire map. As it looks like UFT is now forced to group off to even contest with any of the Saints. So they're just a walking ball of death right now. Malazar trying to move in here. Trying to maybe possibly get an ult and get a kill for his team, but I don't really see how that's going to be possible. Especially with uh, the Xin Zhao there, he's running the anti C yeah. item. That's going to be QSS. rough. QSS. Yep, quick silver is going to be a real thorn in his side here. And now with another dragon on its way in a minute 30, I think they're going to try and ambush the Saints in their own jungle. Yeah, but the Saints are defending their jungle. They all just respawned. They're going to be taking that red buff. His Miracle is going to walk up and Bakery Boy yet again in the middle of three, but this time he has a team to help him out. He's going to get Malzahar ulted, will be on one HP. He's able to get that life seal though and will survive. Now Matty B will fall as well and Saints are now just beating them with their wall as they're simply just too far ahead for Yuf Saga to do anything. As they're going to look for that kill there onto the Nautilus and the Rift Herald is going to be drifting in. Let's see, can they find the Nautilus with this one? Man, he's going to opt to go for that turret. And look how many grubs wow. spawn out of that one. That turret's going to drop in seconds. That's another tier two for side the Saints. And he's going to go for another drift. Now he's going to choose maybe to make his way over towards mid lane in that Rift Herald. Let's see what Rick is able to do. Oh, that's some good driving right there. Avoids another wall, oh, but no. <laughs> yeah, maybe a bit too tight of an angle there. And Matty actually goes down in the bot lane towards so that Varus. It's a little bit of a shutdown, but they get another tier two and their base is just getting completely blown wide open. Yeah, that's definitely not the person you'd want to give your 700 gold bounty to, but it had to go somewhere. So, hey, now the game is going to revolve around the Varus for U of T Mississauga. They need to try and put everything they have, keeping him safe, keeping him fed, and hopefully they can get some kills out of that. But overall, UFC Mississauga having a really rough game here. Yeah, the Saints are going to pick up their third dragon of the game. And I wonder if we're going to see long enough for them to be able to pick up that soul. Bakery is going to... Big Boy is going to be able to find the Varus on the side lane. So getting his uh, teammates back there, avenging Maddie. And 
picking up the bear is saying it's probably gonna move their way over towards the bear and they're gonna look for a dive here top but i think ricky lafer will just 1v2 them with ease here they're gonna try but i simply don't think they have the damage they're gonna do about half of his hp but the ultimate comes out from ricky he's gonna find the empowered q find the flash w we'll find the e through that's a nice kill to start off the 1v2 here and he's level 14 against level 10 gonna flash that mastery oh, the ultimate fails there from the viper you can see how much healing the volleyball has even being down four levels, but Ricky Lafer just way too far ahead will easily find the 1v2 as Bakery Boy finds a solo kill onto the Gragas across the map. And St. Clair are just firing on all cylinders right now. They are playing an explosive game right now. And while all of that is going on, they are securing Baron. And if this does not spell doom, Saga Soul certainly will. We have four minutes until that. And I think this might be the game. I don't really see a possibility for Mississauga to get out of this unless you can really play around, play around this Malazar ult. Get a few kills here and there, but overall it's going to be a very difficult thing to do. Well, this might be it. Ricky's getting dangerously low. Pops the shield, man, just to get out. Seeing the Kalista do some damage. But meanwhile, we see Maddie secure a turret and an inhibitor all on his lonesome here. Three of them are just having to stay up here to watch the other three. Meanwhile, someone worth probably five of their teammates <laughs> is just blowing through all their turrets, all their inhibitors, and he's going to force them to just have to stay back and clear. Yeah, without a doubt, I want to see Saints try and go for the end here. Ricky is going to choose a TP. You can see they're just going to lose so much damage to this Malzahar early pop. Though Spell Shield going to take this inhibitor. Should look to make their way over to the top. But Ricky LaFerre is going to engage here into five. The oh, beautiful knock up there comes out from Miracle. They're able to find one. Looking for the Nautilus to find the second. And they're just running through of Team Saga here. Finding four. And it's going to be a team ace for the St. Clair. 22 minutes in. They're going to be able to close out the game. And close Close out the series in a very dominant 2 0 fashion. Yeah, the first game was amazing, but this game was even more amazing for St. Clair College. What a match to witness. Yeah, I mean, it was a beautiful game from them. I really disliked that Malzahar pick, and it really came to haunt them in the end there. So 1 and 7, just getting killed so many times in mid lane, just playing on the mobile champ against Silas and Zhao is so, so difficult. And Saints were just able to find some strong points there, got the Sin Zhao ahead, and just snowballed the lead perfectly there. And just on an ability level, you really don't want to pick someone whose strongest ability is their ultimate in Malazar against the guy who can steal your ultimate. Like, that's a, that's a very crazy yeah. pick that he picked that into that. He had the information and the knowledge that the Silas was going to be there in mid and he chose the Malazar. I don't know what he was quite thinking there, but you could tell University of Toronto, Mississauga, they played a good game, but the Saints just played a little bit better today. They were consistent, and I think the thing that really put the nail in the coffin was the jungle objectives. They got every single one, every single time. And Mississauga just could not keep up. No, the macro play from Saints could definitely see that they're on another level. Now they're going to be 6-0 and on the season. You have Team Mississauga getting handed their first loss. But still, a lot to improve on. You can always get better. Saints definitely going to be feeling good after this victory as they look to maybe keep a uh, perfect season and not drop a single game all season long. But... I mean, that was just a good series for them. And a great yeah. series, yeah. That was amazing to watch. I always love casting League of Legends with you, Theo. It's always <laughs> such a joy. And props to the team. They're still continuing their flawless streak. And I'm excited to see, her, see it where they go next. Yeah, but... Oh, one, one, yeah, one small thing we didn't really mention. We saw Miracle playing there in the second game and Boschetti oh, yeah. in the first game. Uh, Miracle, a newer player added to the team, a very, very strong support player. So uh, from what I heard, he might be getting a little bit more and more play time as the season goes on as he's going to try and... Uh, get some chemistry going with Rock Boom. You can see in the bot lane, maybe not looking too strong in those early games. A lot of deaths coming mm -hmm. out here and there. So definitely you could see that the new player slotting in is uh, taking some adjustments. But uh, overall, I think Miracle had a very, very good game on the Alistar. And 
was a big reason to why they won that game. Yeah, definitely near the end, you could definitely see he got every stun he needed to land, and I love seeing the new players be slotted in. It takes a little bit of growing pains once you get everybody into position, get the team chemistry going, but that will come with time. But speaking of time, I think our time is <laughs> up here for today, so we're going to go through our thanks. Thank you, everybody in the back for making everything work. That's going to be Daniil and Amanda holding everything down back there. And then we also have to thank our sponsors, HyperX, Tim Hortons, Subway, the St. Clair SRC, and the St. Clair College Alumni Association. And don't forget to follow our socials, everybody, to stay up to date on everything Saints-related, upcoming events, new game, like new games, schedules, everything. everything, new players, anything you could possibly want, you can stay up to date there. As you can see, we have Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, X, Instagram, and TikTok. So make sure to follow our socials there. And with all that being said, we don't have our schedule for the next game. Probably Monday. Probably Monday, most likely. Nothing tomorrow, but we'll see you probably Monday. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. We'll see you then, and have a good day.